sort of the inward student talking about other ways that we help and support our student body. And so we're really excited to be here with you guys today to talk through our handbook. Um, and any questions you have, we can sort of answer at the end, but we just wanted to go through some norms. So first, and Lord has already kind of ticked, um, teed us off to this, we wanna type your name and child in the grade chat. This is just for our attendance, right? It's not gonna be shared with anyone but us, but we just wanna be able to know who is here. Second, we want you to try to pay attention to the information shared. Um, you're gonna need it at some point during the year. We really combed through the uh, presentation and made sure that what we're talking about today is the most important information. And so we are um, giving it to you. Also, Lourdes is recording this video so you can go back and watch it. And we're gonna post it on our YouTube as well so you can watch it there. Um, please save your questions until the end of the presentation. We wanna get through the direct content and then we're gonna open it up some questions you might have. And then finally, and kind of the most important for me is that we wanna protect student privacy. It is so important for us that all of our students are treated with integrity and respect, which means that we're gonna keep student specific names out of the chat, um, other than just sharing attendance wise, because we wanna make sure that we're protecting and minding student privacy. If you have personal questions about your child or about other students, you can feel free to call us at 646-906-4111 but we wanna make sure that we are limiting chat talk to just asking general questions, not specifically about students or sharing about our own student because we wanna protect your child's privacy as well. That also means at the end when we're asking our questions, just please don't mention any student names. Um, like I said, we can, like Mary said, we will be uh, glad to address your concerns privately just to ensure that we are not sharing any personal information um, as this meeting is being recorded. All right, so as I said, I wanna welcome you to our first of three um, workshop series overviewing our student handbook. We say four because last week in your face bulletin, we did talk about attendance a little bit. And so that is a huge part of our ham family handbook that we're not gonna go into today um, because you already talked about it last week, but it's a part of our handbook. Um, our goal of these sessions is to really familiarize you all with the handbook. Ensure that you know the expectations of student bodies, right? We can't meet expectations unless we know them. And so we really wanna make sure that we go through and talk to you about what is expected from your child at our school. And then we wanna establish an early and supportive relationship between us and between you. Um, we can only succeed if we are working together and we're on the same team. And so that is the goal and purpose of these sessions today. If you want to thank you so much. So over the next few weeks, what we're going to cover is first, our safe and orderly environment. That's what we're talking about today. Second, we're going to talk about student code of conduct. That's going to be next, next week, what's in our handbook. And then finally, talking about the Inwood student. These are a multi-part series from our handbook itself. So we're using our student handbook to guide what we're talking to you about today and what our conversation is today. <clears throat> Okay, so first we just wanted to celebrate and sort of share. So last year, uh, well, the last several years, we went through a national certification process with Marzano Resources, which is a national education group that talks about what it means to have a safe, orderly, and supportive school environment. We are very proud to say that we are a safe um, and certified school uh, for level one HRS level one certification, which means we have a safe and collab supportive collaborative culture as determined by um, a national uh, research firm that sort of looked at our school, was able to look at our data, our systems, our processes, and determine that yes, we are in fact certified as level one. And we're very proud of that work. It's been a lot of work for the teams to make sure that we're safe and orderly. We wanna continue to make sure that we uphold that level one status. And so that's ongoing work because like all schools, we are always learning and thinking about ways that we can improve. But we wanted to just share that with all of you. We got to go down to Texas last year and got to meet Bob Marzano himself, who is um, the lead of the Marzano Resources and be celebrated nationally that we were level one certified. We we're also the first school in New York state to receive this certification. So not only the city, but the state, and there are lots and lots of schools uh, here in New York. And so we're very proud of this status. And we wanted to let you know, because today we're going to talk about safe and orderly environment. We wanted to let you know that we use external metrics to think about our environment. The other reason we're doing this and we kind of outlined already is that we're partners, 
right? You have chosen Inwood. Uh, you have chosen to send your child to our school and we thank you for that. It's a real privilege to be able to serve you and your child and make sure that you're there getting the education that we know they deserve. Um, but we can't do that work alone, right? We are partners in this work. I like to think about it as though it's a 24 hour clock. They're with us for a certain amount of hours a day. They're with you for a certain amount of hours a day. And if we are speaking the same language, school to family, we're going to be able to see high achievement for your child. And so the goal is to establish a clear partnership where you know what to expect from us. We know what to expect from you. And we're working together to talk about how to succeed. And so you're going to notice that as we're talking about policies, we're going to go beyond that and we're going to share the why of our expectations so that you're on the same page as us. We don't want you wondering why a school rule is a school rule. We want you to have the information. And so that's going to be part of how we kind of contextualize our conversation today is really thinking about not just the what of our policies, but the why behind them. So First, we're talking about the handbook. We wanted to let you know where you can find it. So you can find the handbook on the website. Um, Lourdes has put a screenshot here of how to use the website, where to go. You go to the families tab and in family engagement, you'll be able to find the handbook. You'll be able to find the handbooks on the website. After our sessions, the next three sessions, we want to make sure that all families have read the handbook, right? We want to make sure that you guys know exactly what's in that handbook and then you understand the expectations. So the goal is that after these three series of sessions, whether you're not watching them live or whether you're watching them on YouTube, you confirm that you've read that handbook by September 27th. That way we can determine, okay, we're all on the same page. We are familiar with the handbook. We know what the expectations are. Um, so this is, a, this is a QR code that you can use to scan, but we're not able to scan yet because we still have three more sessions to go through the handbook. So we just wanted to share with you guys what you can expect and where you can find the information. Um, again, we want to make sure that everybody is familiar with the handbook. And so we want to get make sure all families that sign off that they have, yes, read and understand what's in that handbook. Okay, so today we are going to talk all about how we define safety as a school, how we ensure we have a safe environment, and our relationship with safety and our community. Those are our sort of three talking points for the day. So as a school, it's our job to make sure that Inwood Academy is a safe space, right? We believe that if students feel like they belong and they are safe, they can achieve at high levels, which means the fundamental focus of our work as, as people who focus in culture and school safety is to make sure that all students feel belonging and you cannot feel belonging unless the school building is safe. So when we talk about safety, we're talking about two different types of safety. The first is physical safety. This means that students are literally safe at school. They are safe to transition from class to class. They are safe at lunch. They feel safe within the school building, that their physical body will not be harmed in any way. This means in order, in order for classes and students to feel safe, there needs to be rules and procedures within the school environment to make sure that the physical environment is safe. The second kind of safety we're talking about is psychological safety. This touches on the students' feelings, right? Making sure that they are emotionally safe in our environment and are able to express themselves freely and without fear. Most importantly, they're able to ask for help, right? In education settings, that is crucial. So we wanna make sure that uh, students are able to ask for help and get the help they need and feel safe to learn, which can be a really vulnerable thing. And so psychological safety is as important as physical safety is. So when we talk about safety, we're talking about those two kinds of safety, physical and psychological. So when we think about creating a physically safe environment, in order to do that, we wanna make sure that we have systems for everything, right? There's a way that we do entry, there's a way we do transitions, there's a way we do dismissal. We are all about making sure that we are running a tight ship and so we are consistently reviewing our systems to make sure they are safe. But what you'll see is that our, our all of our entries, all of our transitions and all of our dismissals are highly staffed by our student support team, by teachers um, in order to make sure that we are a safe environment. Within the classroom setting, we have all teachers submit a routine and procedure plan for the upcoming school year to make sure that within the classes, there are also systems, routines, and procedures. This means that every single teacher at Inwood Academy has thought about things like, how do students get a pencil? How do students pass in work? 
How do students collect work from each other? How do they transition from one thing to another? That's a requirement of every class at our school and every teacher at our school to submit a safety plan and a routine and procedure plan to us before they start the academic school year. So in order to do that, right, we just sort of talked about that, but we wanna make sure that we have systems. So every school has a process for key elements of their day. So this looks different at each site and we're not gonna go into what the elementary school does what the middle school does and what the high school does, but we do wanna make it clear that every site has building safety plans for all transitions, as well as posts and transition posts, dismissal posts for all elements of the day. And so each site has specific, uh, specific plans based on their building, but they all three have sites that um, have plans that go through the functionality of their day to make sure everyone's safe. Additionally, in order to make sure we have a safe environment, we have to prepare for times where there might be a threat to safety or times where we might have to do something as a school community. And so in order to comply with New York state law, as well as make sure that our students feel safe and prepared, both schools or all three schools have evacuation drills throughout the year. So we practice evacuation, lockdown and shelter and drills to make sure that students know exactly what to do if there's an emergency inside the school building and outside of the school building. Additionally, all schools have operations teams and emergency response teams who are trained to handle emergencies. So we go to safety training that is put on by the city. And in that process, we are certified to be, you know, operating school buildings, as well as make sure that we have an emergency building response team. And so everyone who goes is certified, given a safety card, and they are the leaders of emergency responses. All leadership and school staff are then trained over the summer on how to conduct these safe drills and have ongoing training throughout the year in order to make sure that we know how to respond to a crisis if it were to occur. Now this is hard, communication during an emergency. If and when an emergency school uh, emergency occurs, our team is immediately working on communication to alert you what's happening. We are, if something happens, we immediately begin communication and Alertus can definitely speak to this. We've got the building response team working to respond to the emergency. We've got the family and community engagement team working to respond to how we're gonna communicate with families. We know that on citizen app or things like that, you might get a notification of something happening. We get that same notification, right? And as soon as we get the notification, we are working to give you information to let you know that your child is safe. We will communicate to families as soon as information is available to keep you in the loop about this. We wanna keep you in the loop and let you know as early as possible what's happening and what impact it has on the student body. So during times of emergency, that means everybody is actively working to ensure safety within the building and externally. And that can feel hard because you wanna know what's going on with your child, right? So you might wanna call the school. At this moment in time, what we ask is that we sort of share, we're gonna contact you. So we have a team that is ready to begin communication the second an emergency happens. We know it can be hard, right? You want to know up-to-date information about situations like this because it affects your child's safety. We have the same concern. And so we are actively working as quick as possible to make sure that we have a plan to support all students and make sure they're all safe. As that communication is done, it will be sent out to you immediately, but we want to make sure that we're communicating clear, factual information to all of you. And so we know the inclination might be, I'm going to call the school, but we promise we're probably on the phone getting ready to call you. And so please just know that if an emergency occurs, the school will contact you. So Mary, I also just wanted to um, follow up on that and piggyback off of that. We have about 957 students at this time and across all three schools. So it will take us some time to reach out to you. Unfortunately, like as much as we want to get everybody the information, I just want you guys to have that number in mind. If ever there is an emergency, just remember there is 957, about 60 students in the school. So for us to be answering that many phone calls one to one basis will be realistically very difficult for us to do. So that is why we would like for you guys to contact us. Give me one moment. Um, so we please let us get in contact with you as you guys get all these blasts through email, 
a phone call, text message, we will make sure to contact you, but just please bear with us if there is ever an emergency when we are not answering one-to-one -one messages. It is because we are trying to do our due diligence to make sure that everyone gets the notification at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that, Lourdes. And thinking about just even from a standpoint of 957 families, if everybody were to call, we only have so many lines we can't even answer. And so we know the frustration. I can only imagine the desire to know exactly what's happening. And I promise you, we take you into immediate account if something is happening. And the FACE team is immediately working for communication to get out to you guys with the facts. Um, I touched on these already, but I just wanted to kind of reemphasize that there is school-wide and classroom safety. So we talked about these emergency response teams. We talked about safety plans. We talked about having transition plans, entry plans, and dismissal plans. And again, all staff then are required to develop classroom management plans at the beginning of the school year. So those have all been submitted K through 12. There are classroom management plans for all classrooms. This talks about systems, routines, and procedures and covers instructional and behavioral expectations. This can be as simple as passing out laptops, asking for help, and having staff be prepared to welcome students into their instructional environment. So all beyond just the whole school building and the whole school network, communication systems, within the classes, there are systems too to make sure that students are safe. Okay. So then the most important thing, right? We have all of these things developed, but beyond and developed and established, but beyond that, we wanna make sure that we are consistently reviewing our systems and making sure that we can make any updates as necessary. Our goal is always safety. Safety is our first and, and biggest concern. If a kid isn't safe, then it's harder to focus on English class, right? So we are constantly monitoring our environment and asking for feedback from the student supports team our operations team, teachers, students, and families to adjust any system that could be more effective. Sites also do consistent cultural walkthroughs to monitor procedures at their school to ensure that students feel physically safe. And so it's important for us that all students at IAL feel they belong. Because of this, we stretch that we stress that culture of belonging with our staff. All students are in advisories with teachers that meet two to three times a week in order to academically and socially and emotionally check in with our student body. At our kindergarten and first grade, students have morning meeting every morning too, where they do an emotional check-in and just are able to read the room and see how students are doing every day. So in that advisory curriculum, in that advisory time, we have an advisory curriculum that is focused on ensuring that students are developing their social and emotional school skills. This curriculum is built on the five competencies of SEL learning, being self-management and self-awareness, social awareness and relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. We want to constantly make sure that students are developing these SEL skills uh, that they can use over time. And the curriculum we use is character strong in the majority of our advisories because they, those lessons build on each other. So what kids learn in fifth grade builds on sixth grade, builds on seventh grade and eighth grade and so on. And so it's all based on these five competencies and strengthening students' social and emotional skills. Additionally, we are very excited to say that we are launching and piloting Leader in Me this year in our kindergarten, first grade, and seventh grade classes. This is a skills-based curriculum that we use to teach explicit leadership skills to students. And it really focuses on the idea that there are seven key habits in order to make a leader successful and effective, right? So the seven habits are be proactive, begin with the end in mind, put first things first, think win-win, Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Synergize and sharpen the saw. So in our kindergarten, first grade, and seventh grade classrooms, we're going to be using this curriculum to talk to students during their advisory period to really develop students' leadership abilities and make them feel like they are active learners in their own life, right? If you can imagine a student who's going through Leader in Me, they're thinking big picture. They are thinking about what their goals are for the end of the year, and they're spending setting small achievable goals in order to get there over time, right? They're being proactive. They're beginning with the end in mind. The, the, the leader in this child is also paying attention to what other people are saying, right? We might want to share our opinion first, but the leader in me teaches students that we got to pause and listen before we respond. 
So this is something we're really excited to launch. At the kindergarten and first grade, it's already begun. This is part of their morning meeting. In the seventh grade classes, this is gonna happen after our sort of initial focus on belonging that all of our schools are working on uh, right now. But we're really excited to be a leader in Maine school and we're excited to bring you more information about Leader Me this upcoming year. In advisory, we also do academic check-ins. One of the most important things um, across the board for student success is students to really know where they are and where they want to go. The advisor acts as the key supporter of having students check in and reflect on how their progress towards graduation, progress towards proficiency, or progress towards meeting their goals is going. So students use that time to organize themselves at the week. At the middle school and high school level, all classes have um, planners that they use to make sure that they are organized and feel ready for the school day. And so we have this time during advisory to settle ourselves in, make sure that we're organized for the year, as well as meet one-on-one -on -one with teachers to make sure that we are feeling good and ready for the academic day and setting goals for the upcoming week. You can go to the next slide. Lawrence. Okay, so perfect. Our team. So who's doing this safety work, right? Who, who's making sure that the school feels like a safe and supportive environment? Our staff has ongoing training in order to ensure that classrooms and environments are where students feel safe. We teach our staff how to respond to hateful language and hate speech within our classrooms, as well as address bullying and bullying behavior in classrooms. Our deans, social workers are here to support students feeling safe and seen. Both schools are, uh, have two full-time social workers, two full-time deans, and a counselor that supports 5th, 8th, 9th, 12th, 11th, and 10th grade. Um, we've got a counselor that is there to support and make sure that students are feeling successful and, and have academic progress being monitored. And finally, our high school has academic counselors to help support progress towards graduation. So we want to make sure that folks as they're going to graduation are ready. They've got the credits they need, the regions they need, and also their post-secondary plan is one to be explored and planned for. Okay, so speaking of safety, something that can impede students' psychological safety is bullying, right? So bullying is not accepted at Inwood Academy. We know that bullying has a large impact on students' mental health and well-being. If bullying is reported to us, we investigate within 24 hours and determine with the discipline team what action needs to be taken. We take bullying very seriously. If it's reported, it's immediately investigated within the next 24 hours in order to ensure that we know what's going on and we can determine the next steps that need to be taken for the students involved. So what bullying is, like bullying, including cyberbullying, which happens online, means any sort of severe or pervasive physical or verbal conduct, including communication made in written or electronic forms, like cyberbullying, that's directed to student or students, that has been reasonably predicted and has more than one effect. So bullying is when a student is placing the student in reasonable fear of harm for their person or their property, right? They're physically afraid or their property. They're worried about their property getting destroyed. It's also when it's causing a substantial detrimental effect on the student's physical or mental health. It's when it substantially interferes with the student's academic performance or substantially interferes with student's ability to participate in or benefit from the services and activities and privileges provided by the school. So it's really important to note that bullying is repeated over time, right? We know that things happen, right, between students. That's just a natural part of adolescent development. Students might have their feelings hurt. Students might say an unkind thing. And if that happens, we respond and we address it and we work to mediate between the two different students. Bullying, however, is when there is an ongoing issue between a student, between student or students um, that is feeling threatening, right? Feels threatening, there's reasonable fear, it's having a detrimental effect to mental health, it's interfering with academics or their ability to perform and feel positive in a classroom space. But the repeated is really important to stress that that is what makes bullying bullying is this consistent repeated conduct that is having an emotional toll on students. Bullying is not um, when we have disagreements. And I think sometimes that students can use the word bullying when they're just describing maybe having a disagreement or a moment where somebody is not kind, right? And that happens and we, of course, address it. But we just wanted to stress with all of you that bullying is not disagreements. It's not disliking somebody 
or having a misunderstanding that is bullying. We're clear to make sure that our students know what bullying is and what bullying isn't in order to support them with building positive friendships. And we're focusing all about this in the month of October. Our advisory lessons, as well as school-based focus, is building that culture of belonging and being really explicit with our student body about what bullying is and what bullying isn't and how to respond when we're being bullied. Here's one of the most important things about bullying though. We need your help. We need to know what you're seeing with your child in order to give us a full picture of what's going on. Because we have the information that's reported to us, as well as what teachers are seeing and intervening and doing. But if you are noticing that your child is expressing that they're not feeling good at school or they feel like they're being picked on, we need you to ask some questions of your child. How long has this been happening? What do you say when this happens and how do you respond? Have you told them that they don't, you don't like this behavior? And have you told the teacher? We really want to encourage that you are sharing with your child that they need to let a teacher know if they're seeing or being bullied in the classroom space, because sometimes this happens in, in moments in quiet that we don't necessarily notice. We might be transitioning from one activity to another and the student might say something and the teacher might not notice. So we need to know, we need to partner with you guys in order to have you help us ask the questions at home to sort of give your child some information about how to respond, letting them know that it even as simple as I don't like that or that's not okay with me language can really go a long way. And finally, encouraging your child to tell a teacher. We also then after that, thanks Lourdes, we also then after that wanna make sure that you're letting us know Right, so don't just leave it in your child's hands to tell the teacher. Of course, we want them to go and tell the teacher and feel safe communicating with the teacher, but we also need to know if your child is experiencing bully, bullying. So we're here to help. You can reach out to me, Mary Hackett. You can reach out to Lourdes. You can reach out to Tatiana. You can reach out to any one of the site directors who's supporting the sites, to a social worker, to a dean directly to let us know. Additionally, if you want to anonymously report bullying, you can do that too. So we've hyperlinked in this presentation a form that we'll send out after this as well, that you can just walk through and click on and let us know anonymously about any information that's happening within the school day. I want to additionally let you know that our students have access to this form too. So when they access their Chromebooks, they open their Chromebooks up and this anonymous reporting form is available for them to click on and give us information as well, which means that at any point in time, if something is happening that does not feel okay from you or from the student's perspective, you can let us anonymously know and we will investigate it within 24 hours. If you, so please use that form, call us, but also you can anonymously let us know too. I just wanna stress that. We don't want anyone to be experiencing this in quiet and handling this on their own. We can solve problems together and we're here to solve problems together with you. Okay, so safety in our community. We know that sometimes there are safety concerns that aren't about Inwood, but about our community in general. And this is just in the nature of working in New York City, right? We have our school in New York City and sometimes there are things that are happening externally that impact our internal environment or could. FACE works in partnership with our families to advocate to local politicians to improve our neighborhood and ensure safety for all. This is something that's very much on our minds. And you probably have either heard or will hear from Lourdes and Tatiana to talk a little bit about how can we advocate and make our safe our community safe? So we're doing positive work in our community. We've got wonderful things like walks for a cause where we are focusing on key area key areas in our community we want to improve. But additionally, we are going and advocating for um, for action in our neighborhood. And so there has been a lot of movement and work talking about keeping our streets safe, talking about drugs, right? And talking about the accessibility on our streets. That's something that we talk about a lot and it's work that the FACE department does to try to work with councilmen to shut down um, illegal vendors of marijuana in the neighborhood. But we want your help, right? We can't do this alone. And we don't know what you're worried about unless you tell us. And so something that's really important is joining our student council, our family council, and letting us know what you want to focus your advocacy efforts <laughs> on this year. FACE yes. is, yes, I go for it. Can you back on that, Mary? Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to make everyone aware, our family council, that's you guys. You are already the family council. We have an executive board that does make decisions, and they're your representatives who we meet with often. Um, but if you're interested in joining and maybe seeing how it is that the family council executive board works, please feel free to reach out to me via email, via text, via phone call, um, and then I can invite you to join us for one of their meetings, um, and that way you can be a little bit more hands-on but when we say family council that is every parent or guardian that is in IAL from elementary all the way up to 12th grade so you're already in the family council but if you would like to take a little bit more of a leadership role uh, please make sure that you make me aware or that the aware. Absolutely. Um, they do amazing work. So please, please, please join uh, and come work and let us know what you're worried about. Because I know that the family, the executive board definitely has ideas for this upcoming year, but you might have something you feel really passionate about and we'd love to hear your voice. Okay. Um, another way that we want to talk about community is that we put on some really intentional events to create belonging in our school, right? So every event that happens throughout the school year has been co-planned with our site directors, with our um, events team to really reflect what's happening, not only in our school culture calendar, but create places for intentional belonging with families. And so as, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, September 15th marks the start of Hispanic Heritage Month, which we are all very excited about. And one of the ways we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, as well as just culture in general, is we have our Roots and Recipe Contest. And if you haven't gone to the Roots and Recipe Contest, you gotta go, it's very fun. Um, what it is, is we have families sign up to make a dish, not even a full meal, a dish, it could be a salsa, it could be a type of hot chocolate, it could be anything. Uh, they come, families try the food, our staff participate, so staff bring their famous chili recipe or a cornbread that they've always made and we go we have we have food we celebrate culture there will be two dance performances this year one from our middle school students which we're really excited about and then one from a community partner that we're very excited about and it's just a fun event um, our staff attends our teachers are present our students are present and we really invite you to be present so you can come and participate in two different ways you can come to the event and just have fun right that's what i'm planning to do I'm going to be there and having fun and making sure everyone's having a good time. You can also participate by competing, right? So you can also sign up in order to compete, try a dish. It is this upcoming or compete, make a dish for people to try. There is a general population vote uh, that where people determine who, what the best meal is they were most excited about. So that'll be happening. And we also have a group of community partners who come around and tell us a little bit about the work that they do in the community and then act as our formal judges table. And they determine what the best dish is at the Roots and Recipe Contest. It is this Monday at 5 p.m. at the middle school gym. This is for K to 12 families. So we wanna make sure that everybody is there. We are so excited. Um, Lourdes, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add about Roots and Recipe, but it's the it's a, the best event. We love it. Well, this just in, we have three performances. So not only is our middle school dance team performing, they're going to open the event. Uh, we're going to have a little Zumba lesson for everyone to get, you know, loose and groovy. And then we will also have a Mexican cultural dance to close the night. So not only food and drinks and recipes, but also just sharing the space with one another. And like I said, creating the, the sense of belonging and like a family, you know, we like to consider ourselves here at Inwood Academy from kindergarten all the way to 12th, a family. Um, and this is an event that helps us to celebrate that. And again, just because it's um, Hispanic Heritage Month, doesn't mean that you have to be Hispanic or Latino. We have um, Miss Lisa Matthews, who is going to represent first of the American uh, culture, and she's doing soul food. So we actually want anyone to come and share their culture. This is something for us to be able to uh, get together and learn about each other's different cultures and customs and taste each other's foods or drinks or anything that you're making. We will be happy to have it. Yes, we can't wait. So please join us. Beyond that, we have lots of events based on belonging, right? This is so important to us that all schools have a culture calendar where they are building events that create belonging for students. And so each site is different, right? We've got some events where they're K-12, like Roots and Recipe. That's everybody. Winner of Soul, that's everybody. And we'll talk about that soon or, you know, in a few months. That's in February. Um, 
but each school has an event calendar where we partner with schools and families in order to create engaging and fun events for everybody, right? So you can look forward to your school's culture calendar to be able to know the times that you can come in, you can hear from our teachers, you can meet um, other students, other staff, get to know each other and, and feel a sense of belonging because we are a school not just for your child, but we are a school for you as well. And so we want to make sure that you are coming in and feeling seen in our events. We do walks for a cause. We do community walks where you can lead and feel a sense of belonging. I know that there's a breast cancer awareness walk that I think is happening in a few weeks, right, Lourdes? Yep. Um, and yeah, go ahead. That information is going to be sent out um, via email, text, and phone call. So these are going to be family council-led events. Uh, we have the autism walk and the breast cancer walk coming up in October. So just letting you guys know to look out for that. It's actually also a great opportunity for students, especially the high school students, to get involved because this is showing how active they are in their community and how they volunteer and give back to their communities. Yes. And then we ongoing, at all three sites, we have ongoing assemblies for schools. And this can look a ton of different ways. It can be a school-wide competition where we are playing games. A guest speaker come in to talk to the students about just some different things. We could be celebrating students' academic success and um, just having time in community with one another. And so that happens at all three schools. But we wanted to let you know that sometimes your child might come home and say that they had a great time at assembly. And that could happen at any one of our schools because assemblies are a huge part of how we bring our community together. The middle school and elementary school tend to call them assemblies. And a lot of times at the high school, they're called town halls. Uh, but they're very exciting times where we bring grade levels or the whole student body together to celebrate, to talk, um, and to check in as a community. Additionally, we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. We talked already about our bullying policy and sort of how we handle bullying, but we want you to know what we're doing about bullying intentionally to start the year. So September is all about creating belonging, getting to know one another, having your child and their teachers get to know each other and get into a routine. We spend a lot of our advisory time and our teaching time talking explicitly about how do we set ourselves up for success. In October, we spend that month then really focusing on belonging and bullying. So our belonging focus will look like our advisory lesson all about belonging and how we can create intentional community where it feels like everyone belongs, right? We're a school for everybody. And so we have students reflect on what belonging looks like as a school, as a classroom, as an advisory. That continues throughout the year, but in October, it really begins our intentional focus of making sure that everyone feels like they belong. Additionally, we have anti-bullying lessons where students are learning about bullying. So what the research shows is that the best way to combat bullying is to talk about belonging, right? We want to talk about belonging. We want to talk about kindness. We want to talk about ways that we show up for one another. But that doesn't mean that we avoid bullying, right? So we talk to them explicitly about what bullying is and how they can help stop it as students. <coughs> Student to student uh, upstanding, as it's called, and talking explicitly and saying, hey, it's not cool to bullying is highly effective in curbing bullying behavior. And so we spend a lot of time talking about how to stand up to bullying, how to be a good friend, what it looks like to be a good friend and good friends with each other. And then finally, one second, sorry, Lord. Finally, we want to also stress that there are consequences for students who bully. We'll get more into this um, as we talk about student code of conduct, but we can't always share what the consequence is for a student who has maybe misbehaved or caused harm to our community. What we can do, though, is make sure that we are addressing what's coming up and let you know that there will be consequences for certain behaviors. So there are bullying specific consequences for students who bully other students. And that consequence is tailored to what that student needs to learn and how they need to address the harm, right? So we wanna make sure that based on whatever the situation is in front of us, that the consequence and the next steps for that student are truly reflecting in what that student needs. And so our Dean team works closely actually with me and works closely with our sites in order to make sure that we are responding to the bullying that's happening and making sure that there are consequences for students who have ongoing repeated behaviors of bullying. Um, while we might not communicate with you what those consequences are if your child were to be involved or feel like they're expressing that, that they have been bullied, 
we can share that there will be consequences, but we can't, because of student safety, we can't communicate exactly what's happening um, with any student, just as we wouldn't communicate about what your student is going through. And I'll talk about that a lot more next week in terms of confidentiality and making sure that your child feels safe at school uh, through that, but yeah. And then finally, how do we make sure that we do this well and that your child feels safe at school? Well, we don't do it alone, right? We have to partner with you. We need your help and insight. So please don't be a stranger, right? Um, we, the more involved you are, the more successful we will be. And so we truly, truly, truly ask you to come to our events, come to these webinars, which you already have done, have a conversation with us, but truly don't be a stranger and keep us in the loop for what you're seeing and areas of improvement. If you see something that you are not happy with, you got to let us know, right? Because we can only improve in the areas that we're seeing areas of improvement. And we certainly are constantly trying to improve as a school body, but you guys are, are experiencing our school from the lens of being a parent. And we need to know what you're seeing in order to best improve and make sure we're taking actionable steps to get steps to get there. Um, we just kind of wanted to go give an overview too of just our hours of operation, right? Because we are here to help you but we can help you within the hours that we are open, right? We're gonna get back to you if you reach out to us after our hours of operation, but we just wanted to be clear with you that from 7.30 to 3.35 p.m., we are here to help. So you can email or call us and, and have conversations with us during that time. But if you email or call after uh, our hours of operation or before our hours of operation, so if you call the school before 7.30 a.m., the school's not open yet. So there's a chance that you might not get a hold of anybody. And I know that can be frustrating because you might want to say, my child, child's running late or they're sick or you want to let us know what's going on. But our, our hours are at 730. So we will get to you as soon as students arrive, right? Arrival is a huge element. As Lord has shared, we've got 957 students walking through our doors at 730 across three sites. And so our staff's focus from 7.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock is entry, making sure everybody's entering safely. Once student arrival is done, we will get back to you, right? So you just leave us a message, you shoot us an email, and we will begin getting back to you and communicating with you. But we want it to be really clear that if you talk to us before 7.30 or after 3.35 p.m., we will reach out to you the following day. If it's a student emergency, you know, sometimes we do get calls and we'll, we'll try to handle that as best possible. But you can expect from us that from 7.30 to 3.35, we're here to communicate. I also, Mary, if, just wanted to piggyback. Um, so if it is something that you need before school starts, we kind of did um, in the middle of last year uh, resolve the, my child is going to be late, my child is going to be absent, my child is sick. So there are forms for parents available on our website, um, which is where you can submit a note, a uh, medical note to let us know that your child is not going to be here. Now, just keep in mind that that goes directly to the office. If there's any follow-up questions, they will be in contact with you to let you know um, that something additional is needed if, if it is needed. Thank you for that, Lourdes. And then if your child is in PSW at the middle school, they operate until 6 p.m., right? So middle school PSW goes until 6 p.m. and early dismissal for PSW is 4.45 p.m. Um, Denise Hikes can be can be reached if you have any questions or concerns at inwoodpsw at gmail.com or call 917-968-0124 if you want to speak to Denise Hikes about anything that is related to PSW. Um, as a reminder, this Monday is our first half day for students. So students will dismiss between 12.55 and 1.05 p.m., so there's an early dismissal for all students at all three sites between 12.55 and 1.05 p.m. And middle school students in PSW will have program until 4 on Monday. So super important to stress this Monday, the 16th, there is a half day for students between 12.55 and 1.05 p.m. And our PSW program and uh, will go until 4 p.m. And then you can take a walk, enjoy the nice weather, and come back for Roots and Recipe at 5 p.m. after you pick your child up from PSW. And that, that's it for today. So we are so happy to have spent time with you. Next week, we're gonna talk about student code of conduct. If you have any questions, we're gonna take some questions now. But additionally, uh, we wanted to just give you our information. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Tatiana or to Lourdes and let us know what questions you might have. We're here to help. but. Right now we wanna to transition to giving you space if you have any questions for us at this moment in time, um, we'll answer them now.
you can either use the chat or unmute to let us know if you have a question. <laughs> 